Hey everybody, it's Sam Serious. So, another episode of GT and H. Time for some uh, decent changes. So, in the last episode, y'all saw me just put this room together. This is getting ready to be a start of the machine room here. So here's the general layout that I have so far in mind. This side will be in charge of creosote production until I can find something to replace it. And all that creosote with water and all is going to be rooted to here to where there's going to be a bunch of steam boilers working their magic. They'll be producing all the steam and each spot will have their own cache, their own uh, iron tanks worth of uh, fluids. So there will be a creosote tank here, steam tank here, which a lot similar to what I've set up there. Water, I'm not too worried about because every single... Uh, water container that I've set up the um, water tanks I've set up has their own massive storage so I'm not too worried about making a tank for that now I have went ahead and created two more of the uh, water tank sightings that's the name of the blocks I was trying to say water tank sightings two more of these not too long ago they're filling up quite nicely so on top of the two sightings I have over there I'll definitely be Moving those to the outer room and then just have the wood pipes branch off of the off them into the um, steam boilers. Now I don't got enough resources yet to start making a bunch of machine walls. But I do have a plan set up though. I will uh, describe to y'all what exactly I'm getting ready to do shortly. All right. So previously in the in the last episode of GG Nature, I mentioned that uh, I wanted to create a large ore processing wall. So I pretty much started up doing a, a creative test world here. So this is the machine wall that I came up with so far, or walls, I should say. One masonator is able to feed two ore washing plants, so I created just four sets of these. All being drawn from one single chest to uh, be ultimately processed into these two uh, double chests. Of course, I didn't realize these things were going to be taking more time than the Mace Raider, so the Race Raider is going to be overstocking them, and these are only stalling a bit because of the fact that uh, the turbines are dealing with the energy loss due to the cable resistance. That's the only reason why that these washing plants are stalling. So I bet we'll want to see if there's like a lossless version of these. Let me see if there's like a... cable of a sort that will be lossless at LV tier. I think this might be a conductive iron cable. I'll have to double check. Scooper nickel. It's nickel. Like 10 is one EU loss. Strict conductive iron. Yeah, I think I'm going to be dealing with, with some energy loss of sort. The only way of counteracting this is to make more steam turbines or to to counteract with each or to work with each ore washing plant or to just simply uh, make very less machines, which is not something I want to do. But all this together, though, theoretically, if it weren't be dealing with energy loss, should be consuming about a constant 136 EUs per tick. That's going to be a lot of steam. Then I can always pull whatever I want out of here to go into this input chest. Have a bunch of Mason Raiders feed resources through the uh, centrifuges. And centrifuges will then process things to their byproducts and whatnot. 
before I deliver the all the items into the furnaces. Now the furnaces, I admit it's a little overkill, but if I'm like leaving this alone for a while and this builds up a lot of ore, I'd like to be able to process ingots real fast with this. This setup here, I'm seeing that this series is consuming like 5 E's per tick with the centrifuges, so it's 5, 20, 40, 2 E's for the space raiders, 8, 16, about 56 E's per tick with this whole machine wall here. I think potentially more depending on the recipe, so I'm leaving two uh, steam turbines just in case of having more recipes that are more energy expensive. And then, this here will be consuming about 16 EUs per tick in total. Now, I'm not going to bother with steam calculation because I plan on overbuilding the steam production anyways, so I don't think I have to worry much about uh, steam production unless I'm talking about the electric blast furnace. But then again, this is over, consuming over what the electric blast furnace does, so this might actually be fine. Steam production might be fine if I can do that as long as I don't have this running. But yeah, this is pretty much the uh, plant setup of uh, ore processing before I start uh, creating other uh, walls for, uh, for uh, machines that act a specific purpose. But yeah, I'll be focused on making more of these LV machines for a while to uh, make a small place of operations before I start working towards MV tier. Oh, figured it'd be uh, worth mentioning the back of the machines too as well instead of the front. As y'all can see, I'm able to get all the lines in their space very nice and packed as possible, so... Have the item ducts be able to loop around the steam supply, the wood pipe supplying the water. The uh, infinite fluid tanks are simulating the uh, water siding tanks and the steam production. Now what's nice is that I'm able to do all this while maintaining a good straight line. So, that means that with these back panel walls, these back walls, stuff like that, I can simply just line one pipe going straight across everywhere I go. That's pretty good to do, be able to do. Because that means things should be very simple to lay out and only parts of complexities near the machine walls. So nice and compact. That's another goal of mine too as well when it comes to making these machines wall. Being able to easily connect, branch off with, and keep things compact. Keep things nice and organized this way. These pipes and stuff, I'd probably be winding up covering with facades of a sort to help uh, preserve a decent aesthetic. So that way, the walls still feel more solid. I'll uh, see more in the future of what to do about that when the time comes. In regards to uh, making the boilers and increasing ovens and all that, well, I'll just show y'all the general idea of what I'm building through a time lapse. Excuse that frame drop there. But in the meantime, I was doing things off camera. I made more creosote ovens. So about eight in total totally worth the investment is now not to worry about rationing creosote so much and with spruce wood being a thing now i can mass produce a lot of wood with just a lumber axe i also uh, made more got hold of more gypsum and uh made more of the blast furnaces so i made a lot of worthy investments had to resort back to the uh, steam systems though, just for sake of getting the um, raw iron produced in mass. Now you may be wondering with the previous design of the ore processing that I showed you in the creative test world, do I have its own separate inventory modules? 
it's because I'm having a problem to where the washing plant and all that has a byproduct that is not processable by macerators and stuff like that. That's causing clogging. These get clogged up and unwant and just causing unwanted congestion in the overall system. So I just have it as three separate modules. So that, so that way, I will always have final output of each module is having a bunch of uh, byproducts that can be processed, and I'll just selectively uh, grab them as I go. Plus two. It's part of the reason why I wanted to be able to have these machines produce things in mass to as well real fast because if I'm able to look away for like a good 10 minutes and come back and just redistribute things by hand, it'd be more, be more worth my attention be doing things that way rather than uh, having to constantly monitor a system and to try to keep things going. That way I can focus my attention on doing other things like um, troubleshooting other areas or uh, planning ahead. Where my next tasks as I survey around. Key to good time. One of the big keys to good time time management is a uh, good automation. Now, eventually, with the ore processing, I will want to create a filter system to uh, filter out certain byproducts and have process processable materials go to other machines. That there will eventually be a thing. But at this time, filters are a little uh, pricey. I only know to work with the Ender IO filters. I can't make a hopper filter because one, they're only selected with one type of item, and two, they require a lot of space to work with. So that vanilla fashion way of doing things is not an option. And there is filter with the Greg Tech pipes and stuff like that, but. I don't when I don't know how to use them. I never worked with them before. That's a learning curve for me to figure out later on. And uh, I haven't seen anything that suggests that I can omit or force a priority move to a certain inventory. Until I know more about how these item pipes work with filters and priority and all that, and root and right and root priority and all that. I'm not going to be connecting all three modules of the uh, ore processing machines. <laughs> that is not until I'm able to... Even then, if I start doing that, it's probably going to be at some point where I'll be hitting HV, where I'll be uh, making use of applied energistics. So even then, it won't matter much to... Uh, make a filter when I hit HV because I can have all these going to a central ME system to uh, store everything in a one mass inventory without having to worry about any un unwanted congestion. I also took the liberty to replace a lot of these pipes with potent fluid pipes. Potent fluid pipes are actually uh, here, let me show you. Potent I actually like potent a lot better compared to the, all the other pipes combined because I'm able to make use of a little bit of, of round robin materials to create, create five dust, not to mention to make the small version of these, or the normal version of these, it's like 6,000 liters per second, which means that these pipes can transfer like 3,000 liters per second. And if I need to upgrade them further, I can always go for large pipes. So this here is a war more worthy pipe. This will be my go-to pipe for rooting fluids around like steam until uh, I can find a better pipe as I progress through the mod pack. I even went ahead and work this end with the uh, electric blast furnace. Not that I would want to do that considering the fact I'm already bottlenecked with uh, what the tank allows. And I'm going to be making the uh, steam, high pressure steam boiler there bigger too as well. I'm going to be maxing out its size with this. 
you all will see exactly what I'm doing in terms of uh, Steam setup here through this uh, time lapse. Yeah, time lapse. Yeah, that's the word. Enjoy. So to basically summarize what I've just pretty much did, I just moved all the uh, tanks and stuff over, established a creosote tank and a and reused the old steam tank. So I pretty much started to uh, move all the creosote from the creosote ovens into the uh, tank that I just set up. I do not want to have hours worth of creosote be wasted, so it took the liberty and taking the time to make use of fluid cells. Those fluid cells are, cells are super helpful because you can literally store a stack worth, worth of liquid blocks in one inventory slot compared to a uh, typical Minecraft bucket. It's rather a nice thing to do. Anyhow, I'm going a little ham here, just replace, setting the uh, Creso ovens again. You know, while I was setting up the creosote ovens, I did get a little bit disorientated on uh, on my placement along the uh, tubes and all. It's a detail I'll briefly bring up in a sec, but just funny how uh, building here was a little awkward for me until I started figuring out what was going on. But due diligence, I got all eight coke ovens set up and just. Uh, and have them be able to be uh, semi-automated. I say semi because I have no uh, tree farm yet to uh, get them all set up, so there's no way of having them receiving wood automatically. Not until I get the, tr the tree farm set up, which I might eventually be playing around with forestry for that. I do know that forestry has their own uh, tree farms. It's a multi-block structure. Which probably means I might need to make use of uh, appetite. So you may be noticing me falling off the uh, tubes here and there, even though I'm pressing shift and sneaking around them. It's actually a small little detail that I didn't notice at first with GTNH when it comes to handling uh, pipes, the wrench. You got your uh, block collision blocks with the pipe which is smaller than your normal Minecraft block size, but when you're handling a wrench, the bounding box that you see popping around the item uh, blocks that I'm specified sides with is actually a literal collision box itself. So I can actually walk out of the uh, collision of the bounding box, and as soon as I uh, take the, the uh, wrench off the selection of the hotbar, that collision box is gone, and I just fall right through. It's an interesting little uh, characteristic of, that these pipes exhibit. That's a behavior that uh, I have to take note of when it comes to like using these pipes to uh, navigate around building. So I'm basically getting ready to do my last set of things here, and... Uh, set up to tank here before I just simply uh, transfer uh, the machines over. Okay, so this is pretty much a big setup now that I've changed here. I pretty much uh, shifted all what I had in the starter room up to here. So as you all have seen, I'm using the same eight cold coke ovens here. Did a difference to where I'm putting all the uh, logs up here and then have them outputting all the um charcoal in there while putting all of the uh, creosa oil into this tank and all this tank will be going into the uh, pressure boiler here now i did go ahead and just maximize the side of this high pressure boiler here I'm unable to fill the tank up with this, but at least have enough crease up going in there to keep this heating up. And I'm still using the same size of steam tank and all. This is my ore processing here set up temporary. I'm having this pipe system go into these three mace, this hopper go through a pipe system into these three macerators. 
and just having all of these machines just output into this chest. So this way I'm not having to be dealing with any machines being clogged up by any uh, process or outputs like stone or, uh, or militiaite dust. Those things that actually clogs up the machines like centrifuge as I was having with the other setup before. So this will definitely be more manual. Now, while I was moving things around and collecting all the pipes and all that, when I moved the t water tanks over, I don't know what was going on, but explosions were going on. I was caused me to loot. That caused me to lose a basic ore washing plant. Luckily, the uh, nothing else was getting destroyed. But what's crazy is that water wasn't even touching these things. Like, yeah, there was water going down at the side of it, but I'm guessing you don't have to have rain going on these machines to cause an explosion. So, moral of the story is, if I'm having a direct opening to the sky near machines, plug the hole. I think that's the culprit that really messed things up with me. In the meantime, I'm having all the materials process up in here. I am going to be replacing that lost ore washing plant. So I'm currently uh, getting some wires in development. I got so much steel right now that I'm not too worried about making the basic circuits. So I'll be working more towards on adding a few more machines into uh, <clears throat> this overall setup. So this will be a temporary setup again until I'm able to expand more towards uh, making bigger ore processing walls. That's the extent of what I was demo demoing to y'all earlier. I may not be able to get to that in this episode, but I'll definitely make it a push for that in the next episode. I did move the uh, brick blast furnaces here. I have plans on making four more of these to tuck in at this side for one, symmetry sake, and two, just get keep steel production in a localized area, and three, I want to be away from these things. Pollution is actually uh, causing me to uh, slow down, have mind fatigue and weakness, stuff like that. It's a little annoying for me. I found it exceptionally annoying when I was uh, down in the um, other room. That I was working with previous be previously before. I like to be in a quick hurry and get things done, but with the slowness effect making me slow down, nope, make it a little awkward. <laughs> I may move these chests and my uh, other machine stuff up there eventually. Just have a small place of operation and just have the uh, basement be more for for uh, long term storage until I can f figure out a better way of storing things. Meantime, I have a few open spots here that one of these days I might repurpose or, uh, yeah, I might repurpose these for something else in the future. In the meantime, I will be, uh, doing something different to trim this area up a bit to make everything feel more uniform. The electric blast furnace. I'm keeping it right here for now until I can figure out how to work with the maintenance hatch without having me to use duct tape I'm not going to be moving this because I want to make sure that I have at least one working electric blast furnace because I don't know any ways of making uh, duct tape right now and even then from what I briefly read from the quest it's actually cheaper to use a soldering iron a wrench and a bunch of other tools on this to uh, completely build it up than what it is to use duct tape I'll worry more about that uh, later on. But yeah, I'm just thinking in the next episode at some point that I'll be uh, work more towards making more uh, ore processing machine walls. And then uh, once I get that done, I should be more comfortable to be able to make these things a lot faster. All the raw ores and stuff a lot faster. And start like a massive storage system for the uh, ingots and stuff. I got a lot of ores I gotta process. I also would like to be able to make some autoclaves and stuff like that so I can just process all the uh, old ores like core, diamond, stuff like that and just reconvert them back onto their gem form through the autoclaves if I choose to do so. 
I just want to have options open up for the future. I also do plan on adding more cre coal, coal coke ovens. I got eight right now. I might expand two more at the other direction just to get ten, and then I'll probably make ten more down below and add to the whole pipe network here. I may need to expand the uh, tin pipes, though, to uh, make sure that uh, enough uh, of the logs are able to be equally distributed to the uh, active coke ovens. Because these will only transfer, the tin pipes that are tiny will only transfer like one item every eight seconds. That's enough to keep up with all eight of these, considering that uh, it takes like Let's see here, 1,800 ticks to produce one, one charcoal, 1,800, that's like what, 180, 90, if my math is correct, pretty much every 90 seconds. So a tiny pipe is enough to be able to supply a little over 10 coal coke ovens. So if I double this, I definitely will need to expand the uh, pipe size. And that's probably going to be the same for the output too as well. I do want to put a compressor here to automatically compress all of the charcoal into the uh, block forms. Reason being is, is that uh, the block form of coal and charcoal will yield the fuel value of 10 coal pieces versus just processing nine at a time out of a stack of charcoal. So in a way, I'd be basically be getting free coal. So that's the big discounted advantage with having uh, burning blocks instead of the individual items itself. So I want to be able to stretch efficiency slightly more. In the long run, that will be uh, more efficient. Which means less work for me to do which means me being able to redirect my attention to more things but yeah this was definitely a uh, task all right since we're nearing like half an hour I pretty much got all the machine stuff I want turned over and done, so a bit lost in what to do for a moment. But you know what? I thought to myself, why not progress a little bit more to towards Twilight Forest? So I'm going to take on the Naga here. It uh, should be an easy boss fight, but you never know what GTNH has in mind here. So it'd be. First boss in here. So I have to hit the head. All right. Huh. Guess the lag is real. Yeah, this is only easy because of lag. Oh, your little guy is poisoning me.
That was only easy because of lag. Anyways, guys, that was a quick fight, and uh, that's a step towards uh, Twilight Forest. The next boss should be the Lich, but that's up for the episodes in the future later on. Anyhow, I wish y'all a fine day, and uh, y'all take care.